Hello, I'm Michael Spicer and I think LinkedIn is cringe. Let's talk about LinkedIn. Is it trying to be a social media site or is it trying to be a job posting site? Well, it seems like it's attempting both at the same time and is therefore being quite bad at both at the same time. If you've ever looked for a job on LinkedIn, then you will be familiar with its hellscape of a website which showcases the cringiest of people posting the cringiest of content. Oh, and you're also likely to have not actually got a job via LinkedIn because it's a nightmare for that too. So yes, LinkedIn does have a newsfeed and as you scroll it, you'll probably think to yourself, who are these people and why are they connected to me in some way? If you're like me, you won't be friends with any of your friends on LinkedIn. So you'll see posts by people that are three degrees separated from a former colleague of yours that you used to work with 10 years ago. You think it would be normal stuff like, hey, I've just got a job, great for me. But it's much weirder. Here's an example of the cringy posts that you'll see on LinkedIn. Motivational posts that are just a series of meaningless idioms that sound as if they've been cobbled together by AI. Get out there and seize the day and reach your dream! Exclamation mark. Stay strong and embrace your power all the way to the top and beyond. Hashtag work ethic. Hashtag sponsored by Red Bull. Out of touch posts about Gen Z trends written by 60 year old CEO boomers who think that Snapchat is a kind of houseplant. Trust me boomers, Gen Z aren't interested in your thoughts and opinions and also they're not reading your posts anyway. Why would they? Someone posting about a recent mass layoff and how the industry that they're now working in is completely dead. Yes, we know. That's why we're on LinkedIn looking for jobs. A personal life announcement. I've seen parents posting about the birth of their child on LinkedIn. That's lovely, but is this baby going to get me a job? That's really why I'm here. Just keep that for Facebook, okay? D don't be weird. Brands trying to be funny and then sort of hopping on trends and memes and then just completely getting it wrong and it being cringe. Here are some of the cringiest LinkedIn posts, historically speaking. If you don't come out of the pandemic with a new skill, a new income, a new expertise, you never lack time. You lack discipline. Correction, if you didn't come out of the pandemic with an extensive knowledge of Tiger King and several new anxieties, then you lack humanity. Also, I ordered a set of eight pound dumbbells from Amazon, which eventually did arrive on back order 18 months later. So, you know, I was productive. I did develop a new talent, by the way, being a teacher for my children during the lockdown. I then had a breakdown. Yesterday, my 14 year old spent an hour researching credit scores, then convinced me to open her a savings account and add her as an authorized user to my credit card so she can start building banking and credit history and good financial habits. She said, give me an allowance limit so I can get into the habit of using it and making regular payments. She then coached her best friend on how to convince her parents to do the same. Financial literacy starts young. It was a very proud mommy moment for me. This subcategory of my kid said or did this wonderfully precocious thing that applies to adults in the workplace is insane. All right, your kid did not say that. And also, I don't think you've got a kid. If you found out that your teenager was locked in their bedroom on the internet for hours at a time and they came out and said that they were researching credit scores, I've got some advice for you. Check their browser history. Excited to announce that I closed the biggest sale of my life. Yes, I sold my wife to a mariachi band for 800k. If you break that joke down, and it, it isn't really a joke, but break it down. What's he saying? I purchased my wife? I sold my freedom? I sold my soul? I mean, what does it mean? Go back to your writing team. That joke sucks. Imagine that kind of post from a doctor. I just removed the biggest tumour of my life. The tumour of loneliness. I'm married. Hiring for a detail-oriented position. Take the candidate out for lunch and see how they eat their corn on the cob. Their true attention to detail will reveal itself. Wink face. How you do anything is how you do everything. Hashtag hiring, hashtag hacks. So are you going to force everyone who wants a job with you to come out with you to dinner and he'll just watch you eat corn on the cob and take notes? I mean, I'm really not sure I'd want to work with you, to be honest. 30 years of buying a $7 coffee will cost you over a million dollars. See the effects of compounding credit card debt for yourself. We may not be able to stop the government overspending, but you can control yourself. 
Hashtag live below your means. If by this logic, I'm not paying a single credit card bill for 30 years, then I think coffee is the least of my problems. The way he says, you can't stop the government from overspending, that's, that's a light bulb moment for me. That's like, well, if, if I can't do that, and the cost of living just continues to rise, and I can't buy anything anymore, then my only option is to steal my daily coffee. So, I can see an upside to that. You know, providing I don't get caught. I made coffee at home last week, so technically I'm a budding millionaire. Well, thank you very much for answering all my questions, Mr. Stevens. My pleasure. Thank you for your time. You should hear from us in due course. Oh, sorry. Um, I forgot. One more thing. Um, would you like some soup? Soup? W would I like some soup? Yes. Now? Yes. Soup. Um, okay. Um, is, is this some sort of test? No, no, I just had some soup under my desk. I thought you might like it. Right. Um, could I have a spoon? A spoon? Yes, a spoon. Yes, of course, a spoon. Is there a problem? No, um, I mean, maybe, I, I, don't, I don't know. Because if there's a problem, you can always say that there's a problem. Oh, oh, I, I, I see. Yes, there is a problem. What's the problem? This, this is a fork, not a spoon. I need a spoon. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a world where spoons do not exist. What? So how are you going to tackle the problem now? I'm not sure. Well, look, a lot of the time, it just makes sense to go with your instincts. Does it? Sure, whatever your instincts are telling you, go for it. Right. Okay. Um, bye then. Oh. Yeah, that's fair enough, really. So who are these people that have chosen LinkedIn, of all places, to be their social media of choice? Surely they must have just landed there after being banned from everywhere else. Or are they just people in this world who enjoy sharing their thoughts and feelings with other business-minded weirdos? Weirdos who have job titles like Chief Boss Bitch and She-E-O Badass at slaying the patriarchy through corporate success. Or President and Founder at Fast-Growing Entrepreneurial Endeavour to be decided once I secure more investment capital. So these are the stereotypes you're most likely to see active on LinkedIn. The 22-year-old CEO and founder, who will probably go from the Forbes 30 under 30 list straight into a 30 to life sentence in prison for tax evasion. These guys, it's always men, are fresh out of university and have just started their LLC, which they're masquerading as a Fortune 500 company. What they lack in actual experience, they more than make up for with the overuse of the strong arm emoji in social media posts that talk about how their most recent failures are very valuable life lessons. It's usually unclear as to what they actually do, um, although the word consultancy is used quite a lot, and one would imagine that consulting an accountant is really th th their priority. The manager who thinks that everyone needs unsolicited advice about what to do and what not to do in a job interview. They always give specific examples from interviews they've just allegedly conducted, where they've spoken to the perfect candidate who just made one fatal mistake, to someone who just completely bombed in an interview and will no doubt be surprised when they log into LinkedIn later to find their entire transcript published on the internet for the world to see and judge. Alternatively, these examples of interviews are just completely made up. It's a similar subcategory to the my five-year-old just said something incredibly profound about the financial markets, but slightly more sanctimonious. I almost hired this woman who's been struggling a lot financially trying to raise her three kids, but then she failed to negotiate her salary in the first interview, so sorry, next. Number four, the over poster. This is a person who thinks that the world needs to know every detail of every update regarding their job, their life and everything. Oh, you just filed another deal and added a big client, did you? Feeling good about this presentation coming up, are you? Here, let me introduce you to something. It's called a journal. Or better yet, a therapist. Tell them. Number five, the reposter. 
similar to the over poster but they just share everything that they see and most of the time it's just some motivational guff a picture of a sunset with the word perseverance embossed across it and then the resharer will post something massively insightful above it like um this well it was very nice to meet you mr stephens i'm sure i'll let you know um in the next couple of days thank you oh sorry that's all right is, is everything okay Oh, I've got my notifications on for, for LinkedIn. Oh, you just posted something. Oh, posted in the last minute. Oh, right. Well, that was probably someone on my team, not me. <laughs> 10 things you mustn't do in an interview. Oh, I, I did most of these things just now. Did you? Uh, you wrote this article during the interview, didn't you? <sighs> well, yes. Sorry. It's just that... Articles like that do so well on LinkedIn, and you were coming up with some absolute zingers this afternoon. I mean, what was all that stuff about owning a pet snake gives you a better perspective on interpersonal office relationships? Okay, yes, I messed up that analogy, but, but that was because I was put off by a bird that flew into the window, do you remember? Yes, I made that number eight. Don't mess up your analogies. Oh, this is really mean. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Right, I, I'm going to write my own article on, on LinkedIn now. What do... What to do if your interviewer's breath smells? My breath doesn't smell. Yes, it does. Did you just publish an article called Yes, It Does? Yes, I did. All right, that's, that's it. Just go, please, because that's stupid. But what about what LinkedIn is actually for? Finding jobs. Well, they're shit at that too. Either it's some made-up company that's just trying to scam you into giving them your credit card details, or it's a, a real company posting a job that has the responsibilities of 18 separate jobs, but will only pay you about a third of one. And they already have 400 applicants and will ghost you anyway. It's all terrible. So what are the job post red flags? Here are the top three. Number one, the company that describes themselves as being more like a family. So during the lunch break, I'm going to have to confront my boss about how I was a mistake all along and how he never hugged me. Oh, no, I'm not going to do that. Thanks. If a job says be your own boss and um, work your own hours and endless earning potential, it's a pyramid scheme. I can tell you how you can be your own boss and make your own hours. It's called not having a job. If the job says that you'll be working in a fast paced environment and that you will be required to work well under pressure, it means you're going to be miserable, you're going to work all the way through Christmas without a break, and you'll be doing the work of three people. Here are some more of the most horrifying job posts, historically speaking. I think if you were a genuinely happy person and you took this job, you could no longer describe yourself as genuinely happy. So this entry level position required eight years worth of experience. So, child labourers only, please. I mean, what do you want them to do? Go back in time. It's unclear what this job actually entails, but it seems to me that they want a clown to stand by the water cooler telling dad jokes. That's, that sounds like a good job, actually. Yes, the FBI are using LinkedIn to recruit special agents. At least they can't easy apply, I guess. Well, Mr. Jackson, it looks like you're going to be a great fit. Welcome to the FBI. I, I got the job. Sure, here's a, a document with all of our uh, security codes, passwords, and logins. Welcome aboard. Oh, uh, uh, what, about, what about a background check? Why do you want that? You know who I am. I've been working here for 20 years. No, not, not you. I mean, shouldn't you do a background check on me? Oh. Oh, well, oh don't worry about that. We've done a, an extensive background check on you. We've uh, searched your name in both Google and Bing. Right. Oh, I forgot, this is the list of terrorists that we're currently after. Uh, thank you. Um, so, so you didn't find anything when you searched for me? No, nothing incriminating, although I was very impressed with your Wikipedia page. I don't have a Wikipedia page. <laughs> yes, you do, my friend. Look. That's not me. Oh, that, that, that's a different Andrew Jackson. What do you mean, there, there are more than one? Yes. Oh, so you weren't the seventh president of the United States? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I was going to say, because you look quite sprightly for a 257-year-old. Um, I'm just going to take these documents back for now. Um, you, you didn't read anything in here, did you? No. Only that thing about Joe Biden being dead for the last 18 months? Oh, that's fine. Everyone knows that. Um, right. So we'll do a better background check on you and call you back. Thanks very much, Mr. Jackson. Thank you.
Uh, Susan, could you send Martin Van Buren, Herbert Hoover, and Abraham Lincoln in here, please? Um, yeah, I've got a few questions to ask them. So if you're looking for stories about toddlers whose first words turn out to be inspirational business memes, or Billy the CEO and self-employed advising you on how to really crush your hashtag Monday motivation by investing in his blockchain scheme, then LinkedIn is the place for you. But if you're just looking for a regular job, then you might be better off checking the classifieds in a newspaper. Thanks for watching. Um, if you enjoyed that, please do like and subscribe. Um, I'm not on LinkedIn, I'm afraid. Um, I just, I can't really be part of these massive behemoth companies, these huge sprawling websites where you're encouraged to just post and post and post every single day. Anyway, you'll find me on YouTube. Bye.